Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that because that's why you've tuned in yet again. So, but before we start with my mate Matt, I just want to thank all them people that have liked, subscribed, left a comment, and shared the video. One love from Big Porky to you all. Now, over to you, Matt. How are you, King? How are you, Ask? Good, mate. Good. I understand you're a neighbour of Barry Hearns. <laughs> Not yet, mate. Not yet. Aren't you moving? Not yet. yet. Not yet, no. Go around and throw an egg at windows for me, will you? I'll do my best, mate. I'll, I'll get my catapult and put an egg in it for you, Russ, and I I'll think do what I'll I do. To reach him. I, I have a dozen eggs on seat at car. It's only like two quid. And what I do, I drive around. You can't get out of cars now and put your fish through a window like olden days. So what you do when you have a bit of beef with something, just wipe window down, throw egg at them. That's it. And try and do it so you're going left and they're going right at a junction. So always have a tray of raw eggs on the seat because it saves you getting an assault charge, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. A little porky top gear top tip there. Right. There's a lot going on in boxing and I like to get everybody's opinion. This is why... We're giving out the email to people, porkycorner at mail.com. Anybody who wants to come on the channel and who's brave enough to come on, you can just put your picture up and we can hear your voice or you can be like me in front of the camera because I've got big gojones, right? And you can have your say. A lot of people have the say in the comments, but they're scared to come on Porky's Corner and talk about it. A lot of people have a lot of chat to come out with, as you know, and I get loads of emails, but I'm giving you all the opportunity to come on here on Zoom on Porky's Corner and chat to Big P, and you can tell me what, you, what you're happy about in boxing, what you're not happy about, what you think's the best way forward. Um, this is why I have a, a, a close little circle of pals that come on, like Matt. Now, Matt, you've got a few things jotted down, just like me, What's the first topic? What what you want? Well, we go on to we 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 start we start with this we start with this live sparring session. BT deciding to put deciding to go out and buy it and put it on box office. Think it needs addressing. I, I want to know what you, I want to know what you I want to know what you think because I think it's pretty much I think it's disgusting to be fair. Well, Mike I'm, Tyson, I'm, I'm, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones are born in nineteen sixties, aren't they? Yeah. I was born in 1970, October, so they're older than me. Right? Mike Tyson's not fought since 04. Roy Jones hasn't fought since God knows when. All I know, they've got 15 losses between them. They've both been knocked out. Mike Tyson's quit on his stool in his last two fights, didn't he? So what yep. can he? how can he be better now but than he was 16 years ago? I don't know, but it looks to me like it's another Logan Paul KSI thing. Eddie Hearn said when KSI, Logan, Paul were on it, we're going to change the face of boxing. All it's done is send a message to ex-pros that, God, look at them getting a few quid. We should do that. If anything, it's made it worse, hasn't it? It's, it's, made, it's made potential cash grabs become... Well, it's, it, basically, TV is... Because the casuals, the problem is with it, Russ, is the casuals buy into it, don't they? The casuals buy into it and just think, yeah, Tyson this, and they see a few highlight reels. But it's all down to the casuals, and the ca and when there's casual interest, where boxing's, it's it's on skid row. You're right. It's they're breaking the, they're scraping the bell with it, and um, how much is it? To be confirmed, price. Don't know yet, but. Got to be a tenner, on it? Fifteen quid. I wouldn't put it past them. Put it, put it at twenty quid, Russ. Honestly, I would not put it past them. Well, if Frank Warren's getting involved with something like that, mate, he's got to be banging trouble, hasn't he? It because seems that way. Surely to God, putting Mike Tyson on, they're in trouble, aren't they? Mike Tyson, come on! How can they get behind everything Frank Warren said about Mike Tyson coming back and all that? And now he's on BT Sport. He, we can't let Bricktop off with this, can we? He's the he's the man with the deal with BT Sport. So what is he going to do? Is he going to say, well, it's not to do with me. It's down to uh, 
BT Sport. But yeah, if they could put think... this on, why couldn't they put Kelbrook Crawford or Lomachenko Lopez? All right. Do you know what? Yeah, but I'll ask you a question. I'll ask you a question on that. Who do you, what do you think does more numbers? A Tyson, a, a Tyson, a Roy Jones exhibition sparring match or a Brooke Crawford or a Lomachenko Lopez or a Davis Santa Cruz? What do you think does more what you would, on, on, at that time in the morning? Brooke Crawford. Brooke Crawford for me. Well, I'd like to think so as well. British kid. Frank had him, did him for more fights than Eddie. He had more fights with Frank Warren than Eddie Earn, am I right? Mm. So Frank had him and Eddie had him, and they both didn't want him. It's the bad blood, isn't there? And this is this ego, this is where egos get involved in boxing. Bad blood, mate. Bad blood. And I don't agree with it. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with it with it at all because. They should just put the differences aside and put it on. Now, it's Kel this, Brooks now thinking, I thought Eddie Hearn were my mate. He's, he's like O'Hara Davis and Lee Purdy. Look, once you're surplus to requirements, you're gone. And then I will have my new best mate. This is my new best friend. He'll have a new best friend then. Eddie's best friend's money. After that, he'll tell his fighters they're his best friends. There's not, there's no such thing as best mates. I've seen it with my own eyeballs with promoters and fighters. They put your arm yeah. around you and you make you feel special at an after party. But do they put their arm around you when you need your arm, when they when you need it, when you really need it? It's all right when you're riding high, but when you hit a bumpy patch, that's when you know about team players. A lot of people, Did especially promoters and managers. And trainers as well, but mainly promoters and managers. They have to ask themselves, am I a team player when it comes to the crunch? And they're not because it's every man for themselves, isn't it? We've seen it in the last seven days. Have you seen the backbiting going on? Do you know what there is in boxing at the moment? There's, there's ill feeling and a lot of bitterness and jealous people. There's ill feeling in boxing at the moment. And do you know what else as well? And somebody said this to me yesterday, who was a former world champion. He said to me, do you know what, Russ? There's an atmosphere. And I said, do you know what? You're right. There is an atmosphere. And can, can you see it, Matt? Yeah, there's definitely tension there. There's a 100%. Lot of tension. There's, def- there's a lot of tension and there's a lot of people saying, how come he's getting this opportunity? How come he's getting that opportunity? What, what, what's going on here? Why aren't they doing this fight? What We were told this and now we're told that. It's people not keeping their promises. For example, I've, well, I, I, it's not hard to guess that this is Dennis, but I'm not going to say which fighter, but when I first started with Dennis, I said to Dennis, oh, how come that happened? How come that happened? And obviously I was soaking it up. And I said, well, if if you didn't if you had him on a if you didn't have him on a deal, what's the problem? No, I think I said, did you have this certain fighter on a deal? He said, no, I didn't. I said, well, why? So we just had an answer you with my pal. I said, look, there's there's no pals. Get it down in writing. Frank Warren has it in writing. I've seen a Frank Warren contract. It was it was nearly as thick as that. Well, it was forty five pages, forty five pages, and I was like, wow, but. It, it, that's to let you know that if you want to mess about, we're going to court. And that's why he's, what, is he 45 and 2 in court? So he's only lost yeah. to Don King and Carl Zaggy, hasn't he? Carl Zaggy didn't, never got, never got paid. Frank just folded it, didn't he? Sports Network. And the Don King one, yeah, it was 7 million, but he got all the fighters back, didn't he? So if you want to play hardball, you've got to get these people tied up on contracts. Now, Eddie Earn don't like all that litigation. They just have it like, look, if you want to work with us, we're top dogs, we'll work together. But you know that you've got to stay loyal. That's a message to say you don't cross over the street to anybody else. So nobody dare leave. They haven't got contracts with Eddie Earn, but they daren't leave because they've all been terrified about going elsewhere. Eddie comes out every now and then, doing does interviews on IFL, and he says, fighters are not getting paid. That's a message to send to those he's working with in his little matchroom cult. For example, Dave Allen, 
Dave Allen wanted to fight the bar for the first for that offer. When he were frightened, they weren't going to get his money, and that he'd burn bridges we had to earn. He were frightened of getting beat by the bar, and Frank discarding him, and him not being able to go back cap in hand, doing an Oliver Twist to Eddie Earn. And this is what power they've got now. This is what power they've got. Kel Brook never did anything wrong talking to Bob Arum, did he? He never had a contract with him, did he? Uh, that, that contract expired ages ago, didn't it? Never from, had a contract. From what we, just, no. Never had a con Frotch never had a contract. After Frotch paid Mick Hennessy off, he said, I'm never having a contract with anybody ever again. And he didn't. He, I mean, he had an handshake and it worked for him, didn't he? Because nobody knew Eddie then, did they? He was feeling his feet, wasn't he? But I just think that fighters need to look after number one. They don't need to, they don't need to get too close to promoters. You get too close to promoters, there'll come a time where it's there's gonna be it's just like having a relationship with a bird, isn't it? Or a bit on the side. Sooner or later, there's gonna be time to part, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's where come what this this is where a good manager comes in, Russ, where he can just deal yeah. with the promoter and go and get the best deal for the fighter on a fight by fight basis. It's a good manager comes in. And so, uh I just feel that uh I feel that Kel Brook's been shafted and I feel that TV companies are, out, are looking for themselves. But I also know that Sky Sports didn't have the budget for the Kel Brook Crawford thing. Right? So why, why do we want to be buying that? Because what happens is there's no production costs. They just buy it in and beam it, don't they, to Sky, right? Yeah. There's no production costs. It's bought in. But who wants to get up at four in the morning just to please hardcore? Well, they'll, they'll still profit in it, but for what advertisement they'd have to put into it, I don't think that they wanted to risk it. They were maybe looking at Kel Brook's numbers on other fights, but he did good numbers with Spence and, and Golovkin, so why not Crawford? He's a pound-for-pound pound guy. Maybe they, were looking, maybe they found out what numbers Crawford and Khan did. I don't know, but... Eddie did bid on it, to be fair to him. He did bid on it, but he lowballed Aram, didn't he? So I, I just think that Kel Brook's been treated like a dog, but it's his own fault. He's like the kid that cried wolf, isn't he? It's his own yeah. fault. You, you, you know, there's an old saying, isn't there? You know, when you're a criminal, right? You, when you're a drug dealer, for example, when you run with the foxes and then you don't want to run with the foxes, it never ends good, does it? It never ends good, does it, when you want to part, when you want to go your own way. And it's a bit like this, isn't it, now? It, it was inevitable, this after Golovkin fight, this. It was just a case of Eddie getting as much... Ring, it's like ringing a cloth, isn't it? Ringing that cloth. I'm going to ring as much out of him as I can. They've got both his eye sockets smashed in. Wrung as much out of him as I can, and it sent him a bit... You know, when he was going partying and blowing a bit of steam off. He took mm. as much out of Kel Brook as he could... And I think he looked at the numbers of the last fight that he had on Sky and he thought, there's not, there's not really much point in me ringing him. And that's what Eddie does. He doesn't ring you. If he's going to go through phases where he's not ringing Carl Froch for six months after he's beat Groves at Wembley to sort the Chavez fight, it means that there's problems. Like they ran into a problem with contract, didn't they, with Froch Chavez fight? Aaron wanted a million pounds to bail out, didn't he? And Frotch were like, well, why should it come out my end? So it sort of petered out into uh, the fights off. Frotch has got an elbow injury, but that's bollocks, mate. He might have had an elbow injury two or three a year, but he always got through. But it all boils down to one thing. Money. Money. And Eddie Earn wants to have big money for not throwing a punch. He probably made as much as Frotch from the Wembley Groves fight. You know, where everything added up. Yeah. But he's not the one getting in the ring, is he? And 20 years from now, when he's 60 year old, Eddie Earn, he'll still be earning if he's a boxing promoter. And all these fighters will all be long gone. They'll either be in jail, drug addicts, alcoholics, on benefits, or working in a factory. Ring Eddie Earn up then and say, hey, Eddie, are you still my best mate? When he's driving by in his Rolls Royce, ask Lee Purdy. He's from down your way, isn't he? This is my, they were best mates, weren't they? Where's Lee Purdy now? He'd be stood at a bus stop. Nowhere. Stop and drives by, won't he, at Rolls Royce? 
They look at him there, Purdy. I used to promote him. Cold out there. I'm glad I'm not a, a bus stop. That's the harsh reality. Sometimes it's better to be an armchair fan and just to sit and watch it. And it's same with Warren. He, he's he's just a, just same. Like I said to you, what's Warren saying? Treat fighters like mushrooms. Feed them shit. Keep them in the dark. Am I right? The fighter yeah, is the I'm, I'm... last one to know. He's the last one to know, the fighter. That's why fighters should manage themselves after three years. They're the last ones to know anything. They're kept in dark all the time by managers. Yeah, you managers out there, you keep your fighters in dark, most of you. Managers, promoters, they keep the fighter in the dark because it's best way in it. Because they're thinking of the end result, aren't they? Money. They're not bothered about people getting blows to heads because they're not in the ring, are they? The fighters are in the ring, aren't they? They're, dish they're, they're under getting punched, aren't they? And handing punishment out. I just think it's wrong. It's all our soul upwards, isn't it? I don't like. I don't. I don't like the way it peters them. I, I do think that. I do think sometimes that the, some fighters get greedy, and I just think they try and when they start earning the bigger money, I do think they start cutting out middlemen when some of the people who have got them there like got them to where they've got tips. to. Yeah, but I'm talking more from a managerial, man, managerial perspective. Like people like Steve Wood, he's had fighters leave him, but it, but he's got them to certain positions. But he don't, he don't really have a contract, or if they want to go, then he just let them go. Do you know what I mean? When sometimes you should just stay with them and and just ride Steve it out and go ring, through thick and thin. Steve Wood, Steve Wood's not in the ring throwing any punches, is he? I know, but he seems to be doing the best for his fighters, though, Russ. He, he seems he to be getting him the best deal. He doesn't take sides. It's like, no. for example, Coldwell and Frank Warren, right? They're not mates, can't stand each other. So the, so Coldwell stayed out of his way, but he's in a position now where he's got a good cap in hand, doesn't he, to work with him, hasn't he, to get his fighter on a Warren show. So that'll be awkward for him. But the brass neck of them, they'll just turn up at a Warren show, do his job and go, put the head down, not make eye contact with anybody. But all them Warren lads, Alfie, Francis, George, all of them, Bobby, Frank Warren, they'll all be wanting to make eye contact with contact. We, we call well, sorry, trust me. But the brass neck of these people, to get a few quid, they're willing to do that. Whereas me, I'd say, fuck off. I don't want to fucking work on his show. I don't like him. Fuck off. That's it. Hit the fucking train. Hit the road, Jack. Do you know what I mean? But mm. the brass neck of these people, because they are prostitutes. Dave Caldwell, you're a prostitute and you know you are. This big porky says you are. And that ain't weird twinkling me eye. You fucking know you are. Prostitutes, mate. David A, for example. Have you seen all these interviews he's doing this week? Well, this, I was going to get on to him. I was going to get, get on to him. I was going to get on to him, Russ, but we we might as well just do it now as you brought him up. Yeah, so David then. Day, right? He's a fucking prostitute, mate. Have we heard all this before, Derek Chisora? Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. He's doing things that he's never ever done in a gym before. He's like a twenty-six year old. He's eating kangaroo meat. I think we heard all this, didn't we? Before David Day fought Vladimir, then we heard it before. The, the uh, Tyson Fury fights that got cancelled, then he were retired forever, then he come back and we had it with, with, with Bellew fights. Who's giving this prick a fucking platform to fill us full of bullshit? He's filling us full of bullshit and he's creating fake beef with Dylan White now. You know, like the fake beef he created with Bellew? Yeah. Fake beef. In fact, it's fucking laughing luncheon meat. Fake David A's retired. David A's retired. Who, who cares about him, him and Dylan White? Well, he beat cares him? about I his twenty-five percent off Del Boy, doesn't he? That's what he cares about. Yeah. If he can get Derek in ring for four million, he's taking a million. That's not bad when you don't have to fight, is it? That's true. That's true. I mean, are we gonna listen? Listen, I ain't buy. I I watched an interview of him and Mister Bean, as you as you call him, yesterday, and uh, I was just. I was just, uh, I was, just, I was watching the interview, Russ, and you just, you just can't help, but I just can't take anything he says seriously. I mean, we're we gonna just sit there and just like let him con us again. 
He's a con man. Yeah, he's a con yeah. man. He's a con man. He's a listen. I give me. I listen. Very good fighter in his day. Yeah, boy, right? and then a very good salesman. Yeah, you can't take that away from him, Russ. Yeah, but listen, Chisora's what's he? Thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Like I was, this is. I was having a conversation with me, mate, yesterday. His best days are behind him. Way behind him. Like, he, how many wars he's been in? I heard someone said yesterday, don't really take clean shots. Talking like that, listen, you know, do, 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 Dylan the donkey. You know? Listen, listen he, he's, he's, he's way past his best, you know, way past it. Two, three years past his best. You think Frank Warren would have let him go? You'd think Frank Warren would have let him go if, he'd, know, if he'd have been in his prime. Cabayel peppered him, for, for, peppered him in, in Monaco. And after that, Tyson Fury and Eddie Hearn said it were over for him. He's now on his second pay-per-view. It's recycled shite, and we've got to get rid of it. Because you know shit. You know you get shit on the bottom of your shoe. What the first thing mm. you do, you go, fuck, you know. You get rid of it. You know why? Because it leaves fucking stains and skid marks on your, in your house, doesn't it? Do you think it's just the heavyweight effect of us that they, they, they can just think well, yeah. they, and you don't know, you don't know with the heavyweight. So listen, they, they could, they could. Uh, one punch can change a fight. Listen, one punch can change a fight. A super middleweight as well, mate. So let me tell and, you this: and, you know what so, they're going to do, which is aura. He's going in with Usyk now, right? And he gets punched all over. He probably loses on points against Usyk, right? Or late stoppage, but he gets beat. Fair enough. After that, where does it go then? They'll be begging for that Dylan White thing. So they need, a, they need a narrative for Dylan White because if Dylan White wins against Povetkin, Joshua's tied up next year for two fights. So where's Dylan White go? He can't go for Fury. So they need a dance partner. So they'll go for him. But if he loses, if he loses Dylan White, they'll, they'll, that fight's easy to make. If he wins, they'll get Povetkin or Dylan White. So Dylan White, Povetkin, Chisora, Usek. That's your little round robin now. Right? That's going to be a little round robin and that's going to keep churning it out. People like us are going to scream blue murder. Oh, I'm going to rage. Everybody's going to rage. Asylum, you, everybody else, Terry, Rico. And they're just going to put their heads down and laugh. What they do, these people, right, when they get back to their hotel rooms, that. They laugh because I've I've been in a couple of them's company a few years ago and, and, I, and I remember people I'm not going to say who, but they were talking about fans complaining and they were laughing mate and I was like God and, and I thought well that was my opinion but then I were a bit more I were a bit more reserved than I am now because this is what it does to you isn't it this game I were a bit more reserved and I thought they're the fucking laughing here they were laughing and I was like oh my God and they were going like that and I thought Jesus. There's no scruples around a pound note, is there? So they're gonna keep no. they're gonna keep churning them out. It's like recycling, isn't it? They're gonna keep. I mean, can you imagine Shizora coming back with ten losses and putting it being put on a pay per view. Sounds a lot worse than nine, doesn't it? So they put him on another pay per view. What happens if he loses? Then work with Dave Allen, won't it? And Dave Allen is probably looking at it and thinking, well. If I get beat again, if he beats this guy at weekend, doesn't he? Then he's going to be thinking top 15, then Chisora, Povetkin, White rematch, David Price rematch. When there's nowhere to go, then he'll jump over to Warren and go, I've got to look after myself. Gorman, Debar, Joyce. So there's eight fights for Dave Allen there and probably two or three million quid. But we, we know what's going on, don't we? Because we see it. We see it. Dave's already not himself, is he? He's walking around like Vincent Gigante, anyway, in a dressing gown, doing his retard act, isn't he? Acting daft and making out his daft Dave, isn't he? To be controversial, but it's a bit, it's a bit overkill now, isn't it? Let's have it right, Dave, walking around in slippers and and a dressing gown outside an hotel all day, hanging around outside the hotel all day. Why? Because there's a camera nearby. He's overkilling it, isn't he? Can you see? Been overkilling it for a while, Russ. He's Honestly. overkilling it. It's too much. Why ain't he resting in his room? Should be resting in his room, shouldn't he? And, and getting ready for a fight, shouldn't he? 
The guy he's fighting is a complete pudding, isn't he, Mister Blobby? A mess. He's a he's mess. A me- have you seen? Have you seen him on the pla- You got to see him on his Instagram on his on the punch yeah. bag, Ross. Yeah, Buddy McGurk. He's, yeah, no, no. I'll just see saying when he he's just threw a few hooks on the punch bag the other day, but you can just tell the way he's hitting the bag that his hands are just stuck in cement, and he's just just a big fat pudding. He will. He'd be on the floor within four rounds and and we'd be saying, well, God, what was that? Sunday morning, we'd be like, what the hell was that? Well, Sunday morning, he'll be on IFL telling everybody he's world-ranked and he's coming for char. That's what's going to happen. I'm telling you now, right, if they can put KSI, Logan Paul on, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, and they put... This, this is boxing in 20, 2020. Dave Allen... And char Dave Allen walking around in a dressing gown with a mask on that's upside down, masks wrong way around. You're doing that, so you say, Dave, what, what's that? What's that around your face? You've got it wrong way around. You're doing it for attention and trying to be different because there's no crowd to play up to, is there now? All you've got is a Not camera, a aren't you? So you've got to think, well, what am I gonna wear? Walking around in a dressing. You know, you know, if you were doing that in any other job, they'd say cart him off to Looney bin, wouldn't they? The only thing he's not doing is shuffling up and down the street with somebody holding his arm like Vincent Gigante trying to make out that he's gone crazy. I'm I'm telling you now, mate. And these people are buying into it. David A were taking piss out of him on IFL. But they're buying into it. But we know what's going on, don't we? Just get in, knock the guy out and say, right, I'm top 15 now. Just carry on. But forget all the pantomime WWE stuff. I don't want to see that. I think that's embarrassing because we know it's fake, don't we? I know it's fake. Everybody else knows it's fake. But this is where we're heading now, isn't it? I just want him to go in and knock that prick out because he's a prick that love joy, isn't he? Knock him out, tumble him down, timber! And then move on with your career. But don't be calling out Tyson Fury and world title. No, it's an insult to them lads that. that... You know all them lads that are going through area English, British, Commonwealth, European? They're going through them levels to get to mm. the top level. Why do you need to do that when you can just come out and just be doing stupid stuff on social media and get a bit of a cult following? Whoa. It's like Logan Paul and KSI, isn't it? Why do they need to train as boxers every day and go through levels when they can just have a bit of beef on YouTube, cause a bit of knackers and get pay-per-view fights? What is fucking going on? Who's the ringmaster in all this? They said he ain't, isn't it? And Sky, they're allowing it to happen. It's crazy. It's craziness. Yeah, he's getting punched in Ed David, isn't he? But come on. You're walking around in a fucking dressing gown like a retard. People do that on Looney Wing in prison, you know. They shuffle about in a pair of slippers and a dressing gown. I used to see him and think, Jesus, I don't I hope I don't end up like that. And somebody said to me, he's been in 20 years, him. Retards, mate, retards. Did you see it on IFL? I was embarrassed for him. And his no, face was just out in his face. Well, I'll have a bit of pie and mash loving dinner kill with dressing gown on. What the fuck? What's going on? Am I a fucking lollipop <laughs> or something? Am I, what the fuck am I watching? What the fuck is that about boxing chat? What is it, a reality, reality TV programme? Where's the fucking boxing chat? That, listen, that's what it's turned into, though, Russ. That's the point you're missing, mate, is that it, is it just one big reality TV show in the bubble and people the are bubble? writing their own... In, in, in their people writing their own scripts and own narratives. You, you know what the problem we've got with all these scripts and narratives, Russ, yeah, right? Yeah. Is that the problem is, is that... Boxing ain't mainstream mainstream anymore. Not been for a long time, mate. And with it not being mainstream in the mainstream media, they can get away with feeding all these YouTube channels all the garbage that they want. That's it. That's that's where it starts, isn't it? Feeding, feeding IFL, feed, feeding Coogan, whoever, Rob Tibbet. Start, start, start dangling fights to see what response they get, and and then start running your own narratives. Well. Chisora, Chisora's worked his guts off for this fight, and 
Rabi Rabi. Listen, of course he's going to work hard for his for his for his fight. Look, and there's a pot of gold at the end for him. Do you know what I mean? So of course he's going to be motivated and work hard for his fight. I don't expect nothing less. And of course he's going to try. That this that's how they're selling it now. Well, he's going to have a go, isn't he? Of course he's going to fucking have a go. Him. I thought no one's asked that question. Well, this is how no I one's asked it, that. Right? No one's asked that questions, Russ. That's what I mean. That's the whole point about the mainstream media. Ed Robinson said that before on uh, he done a box of nice stories, yeah, with um, with Tris Dixon. Yeah, it was pretty good to be fair, Russ. And he said now the and they were talking about this specific subject about YouTubers and the access they get compared to the media, what they get now, and. He said, now the mainstream media have turned their back on them. Well, there's a few of them out there, but it don't get front page news, does it? Or even back page news. That's football. So it, it's just it, it's just in a column with nowhere. And that's why we got in all this crap on there. Do you know what I mean? This is why this is why one of the big reasons where we're at in boxing now and what we what, what we what we have to pay for and what we're getting fucking served up. I'll get in the fucking arm. Pardon my language. Uh, can I just point out to people, right? All these people keep saying, Oh, God, there's too many adverts on there. When we swear in a video, you don't get a penny. All right. Stop crying. Skip ads. Right. All right, then. We're, we we always end, you end up coming back to the same old thing with this because it's all tied in, isn't it? We... We, we this shower of shit that we're having to fucking... Everything have. runs into everything, mate. Everything runs into fucking Eddie Earn. He's got his hands in more pies than fucking uh, Arthur Daly. So Mike Tyson Mike Tyson and Roy Jones are both shot to pieces. They, they, they both got money problems as well, aren't they? I've heard on Great Ryan. So they're going to come back, get a few quid and laugh all the way to the bank. But it, it, it goes back to... Uh, like the Dave Allen situation, we had, we Adam Smith. The narrative people are the commentators now. The same Mike Tyson's on about killing him and this and that, aren't they? And blah de blah. Well, what will happen with this guy Chisora when he goes out to the ring and this Lovejoy? You're gonna hear Adam Smith and whoever's with Macklin saying Derek Chisora is game. He's really up for this, and the last thing you lose is your power. They're going to be saying things like that, aren't they? Well, Lovejoy's older than Chisora. He's 37 in a couple of weeks, isn't he? They're going to say about him, he's not, he's beat everybody he's been out with, and knocked them all out, and then Macklin will go, yeah, 17 in first round. Yeah, and he's only been in ring 44 minutes. 44 minutes as a pro. No amateur experience. And he's going in with Dave Allen, who's been in with everybody. But when you scratch the surface, though, yeah, Dave Allen's been in with Ortez White, Yoker, David Price, and twice Lemroy, Tom Lemroy Thomas. That's 51 rounds, but he only won two rounds against Lemroy Thomas. He never won a round against the others, did he? So does that count, him saying, look who I've been in with? He doesn't, does it? Because you lost every round. No. Do you see where I'm coming from? No, he wasn't competitive in... The, the ones he got stopped in as well, the yoga fight, that was just a beating. That was what? I suppose it, that was just a beating. It was just a beating. It took years off his career, to be fair. But, I mean, with... Um, I don't know, with, I don't know, with Dave Allen, we'll see what happens Saturday, but... The, I'm going the, down to win by the, knockout. Savannah Marsh. Yeah, he'll win by, he'll win, he'll win by knockout. He'll win by knockout. Usyk, knockout. Accumulator. Free, free. Marshall, Allen, Usek. Accumulator. All, all by stoppages. That's the only bet I'm going to put on this weekend, I think. What do you think? Uh, I don't... Oh, I, thought, I think Rankin might see the final bell. Yeah. You reckon? Might might see the final bell. Not I, I'm I'm just not for the for the odds. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'd rather put I'd rather put in. You might as well put in Javonta Davis knockout instead of that because I think that's more of a certain. All right then. So we're not happy with Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. No, we're not. We're not happy at all. I'm not. No, I'm, I couldn't believe it when I see it on Twitter yesterday. But they they're doing it so. I suppose fans have got to 
vote with their feet or just not buy the thing and stream oh. it. Just stream it. Just that's what I'm, listen, that's the message we get. Just stream it because at the end of the day, it ain't going to stop. It ain't going to stop. All Man, right. I, I, listen, go on. Go on, we go on, we move on, we move on. We'll yeah, move, yeah, on. We'll move, we'll move on from them shit houses. I mean, they've had their day, haven't they? Why are they coming back nicking pay per view? And why are TV companies pandering to them? Why? This is the thing, isn't it? This yeah. is uh, this is the problem. All right, the number two. Instead of all these boxing bean masons apologizing to the board and apologizing to Sky and apologizing to Eddie and apologising to Terry O'Connor. Why not say sorry to the fans for the garbage being served up? Uh, Carly's sent me that. She got that off one at comments. Uh, she didn't say who. So whoever put that comment on channel, uh, well done. Why don't they apologise to fans for what they're serving up? I think that's a good point, do you? It is a good, it is a good point, but when are the, the, when are the fans going to realise... They don't care about the fans. That's the whole point. They don't care. We've seen we've seen the response. We, we've seen what the, the, the Robert Smith said after that disgusting decision. They don't they don't care about the fans. So they're not going to apologise to the fans. Have, have you ever heard Eddie Earn apologising about a pay per view? No, he's, they don't. They, it's either you buy it or this is what you get in, and that's it. And all the all the media and all the YouTube boys would just say, yes, Eddie. Yes. Three bags for Eddie. Instead of saying, look, that ain't good enough. Surely that's not good enough. Do you know no what I mean? But no no, no, boat, no one's going to... No one, exactly. You just took the words out of my mouth. No one will rock the boat. It's not like me, sat with Dennis. So what do you think to that? I'll say, fucking hell, then it's garbage. That He'll go, you're off again. I go, you can't do that. I don't agree with it. You, we can't be yes men. Right, he, 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 look, these people, right, they're having it off, aren't they? So they're not going to want to want to rock the boat, but they want to ask the questions, and they all know the game is you can't be doing that, you can't be doing this YouTube stuff for as long as these are doing and not learn about the game, right? But there's too many people licking people's arseholes. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm even going to tell you this right now, do you know? I'm do you know, on Saturday, you're going to see Dave Caldwell and Tony Bellew ringside. Right? Carl Froch is going to be in the studio. Caldwell and Bellew are going to be ringside, right? They're going to be hanging out of the back of all things Sky and Matchroom. They are what's wrong with boxing. They know what's going on, but they're just, they're not going to say a word, are they? Because the noses are in the trough. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, listen, listen, they need they need to stick. Obviously, Adam Smith will be doing a commentary. Not his biggest fan. I don't think you are either, Russ. My nah, fuck but, is it, you Look, at the end of the day, I don't want to be in biased commentary come Saturday night. And I don't really want to hear Bell you or Bell, Bell you, listen, Bell you should not be a pundit come Saturday night. We all know whose mate he is. You know what I mean? We need people, neutral people, calling it down the line. Another thing as be... well. Another thing as well. This is what this, this is a point I want to break. I want to bring up. The rimming now is that bad that I'm starting to wonder if people have got mud on people, or I don't. I don't know. You know the scorecards you're going to see this weekend. Teddy mentioned it. You're mm. going to see a lot of one one five one one threes. You know the one one five one one three card. They always call that, don't they? The sitting on the fence one. They might want somebody to win, but it might not have done. But if they get one one five one one three, they can always say, well, you know, it's on it one round and it had been a draw, but it's it's what you it's what you're looking for. I understand all that. What you're looking for? Are you looking for somebody that's throwing punches? Are you looking for defensive skills, a back footer, a side to side power punching, uh, somebody who's going to jab? But uh, and there's a big but in this. When you sit these people down and say, "Well, show me how you came to score that round of ten, that round of ten, and that round of 10. And why did you score them others nines? Sit 
I'll come and film fucking Terry O'Connor and I'll point the camera at me and him and I'll say, right, show me how you're scoring that. And what we'll do, for example, I used to study boxing ages and ages ago in th- per round and I'd look at opponents for certain people who were going to have big fights. And I'd break a three-minute round down into 30 seconds, into six 30-second segments. And I'd write down what they were doing. And you discover a pattern there, don't you? This is what these analysts do and all these technical people and that. And you discover a pattern of a fighter's psychic. You know, he's what, what he's taking in as data. as he's, And then you'll, you'll, you'll get to work them out. Not many people do this, but because you can overanalyze things, can't you? But that's what I do. Yeah. So I'd sit him down, old Connor, and I said, right. And I put the c- clock on and I'd stop it after 30 seconds. And I said, right. What did you see in that first 30 seconds? Who have you got winning that? And then you mark it down. And we do that six times and we come to a score for each round. And I go through every fucking round with him. I say, you show me how you got that for that scorecard. And then I'd want to sit the other two for, other two down. Alexander, who gets a pass done in Michael Alexander. He had it by two rounds, didn't he? He'd, I'd want him to show me. And I want Marcus McDonald to show me what he was looking for. Because you've got... Three scores there that are totally different. O'Connor's score and McDonald's were nine rounds apart in a 12-round fight. What the fuck are they watching? One of them's at fault, aren't they? Which one is the bent judge out of all of them or the one that was incompetent? Because they're either bent or incompetent, aren't they? If you had a bit, if, if I owned a building site and I were having 10 houses built, right? And say, for instance, Frotch. Bought some property over here and he had t- eight or ten houses built. And he had somebody, the security guy, lo- lo- looking after all the materials. Carl would say, right, who's nicked all these bricks, right? And you'd say, oh, I had nicked them. Well, somebody's nicked them. You've either sold them or you didn't see somebody nicking them. So you're fucking down the road, aren't you? Am I right? Uh, yep, yeah, absolutely. So Terry O'Connor is either fucking useless or he's had a brown envelope. Which one is it? And if he, Robert Smith can't give me a fucking answer, I want to know. I want, it, I want him to go through his card. Let's see some fucking transparency. Sorry for swearing. Another video. I'm waking for note again. But let's see some transparency. Do you know what I mean? That's all I want. These people are fucking aloof. But what did you say about the Premier League referees when they fuck up? Go, they get dropped down the division, didn't they? So you drop these down to the. If they're doing the main event, you drop them down to the undercard, Russ. Or the, they can't, or, can't or they? The small they're, look, this... they're in bed with them, aren't they? Well, it's of course, this is the problem. Eyeballs. It's in front of our eyeballs, mate. Uh, you can't. See, Terry O'Connor, I think the, the the argument here probably have is that, oh, well, I like, I like the aggressor. I like the aggressor because Ritson was coming forward and he scored that eight, 118 to 110 for Huey Fury versus Parker. And that was a few years ago, but all it was is... All it was is Parker... All it was is Parker coming forward, but he wasn't really doing much. He was just getting made to miss. Listen, mate, this is how I look at it, right? It needs tearing down and starting again. You, you seen what Rico did? It's all out there, all information, if you know what buttons to press. They had £900,000 last year at Border Control, but they didn't pay tax on it, the 900 profit, because they spent it all, didn't they? They spent it all on expenses, flying all over. Big living and they- all that. That's how, they probably run, that's how they probably run it on a year-to-year basis, mate. They've got fantastic the lifestyles. That's £18,000 a week on expenses. Where, they, where are they going? What what are they putting down for their expenses? Is it like MPs? Oh, put me down for a pair of shoes. Oh, I'll have a suit, tailor-made. Oh, we'll have a big hotel. Oh, we'll have a limo. It's free fucking gratis. And do you know what? Whatever they've had, whatever they've had now... Consider it severance pay. Take the fucking train, mate. Get out of Dodge. Fucking go now. Because it's annoying me. These people... What do you think, what do you think the promoters... Should, what do you think the promoters should do, Russ? Do you think they should start using... The promoters are the problem because they're in bed with them, aren't they? The promoters need them, don't they? 
The promoters need to start their own fucking sanctioning body up, don't they? All it, you know, these people, right? They didn't, they're not voted on. They just, it were a load of fucking businessmen that got their heads together and said, you know what? We're going to be in charge of boxing and we're going to, we're going to need medical people. We're going to need a bit of admin. And that's how it started. And it's just sort of evolved from then. The, 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 the 70 odd year old old men that, that just want to be hanging around somewhere and having a bit of free gratis because that's all it is, mate. Noses in the trough, and it's got to stop, mate. It's no good people you know what? telling you know... me. Hang on a second, it's no good people Go telling me, right, and give me bullets to fire. Then he swore me about this, and I said, No, I'll say what I want. Yeah, but you have to be careful about people giving you bullets to fire. I'll say what I fucking want. If there's something I don't agree with, I don't agree. Maybe I might have gone a little bit too far now with it, and people are like, Fucking hell. I didn't... Listen. People tell me stuff all the time, and there's a lot I haven't brought out yet because obviously these videos have to be checked to see if we're saying anything legal, anything that's not right. It's in my fucking opinion. These people are incompetent or corrupt. If there's a problem, fucking take me on. Take me on. I'm telling I want these people to take me on. The information's all out there. What are these people spending eighteen thousand pounds a week on expenses on? What? Well, it's all there. Go to company house. What? They're not paying tax on it. So what expenses are these people having? Are they living all year round in hotels? Because there's only a handful of them. What? What are they doing? They're not in the fucking ring fighting like the kids that are fighting their hearts out and getting robbed on shows, are they? And what about these novice kids that are coming through? Oh, what about these move? Ah, oh, it's a move around. What about these kids, these journeymen kids that are getting fuck all? What about these kids turning pro that are having to run around selling tickets while you've got these fuckers living big, big fat cats? What's going on? Ain't nobody going to do anything about this. Ain't nobody going to get rid of these shit houses and get a new lot of people in that are young and vibrant and have got different ideas. We've still got the same rules in boxing as we had 50 years ago. What's changed with rules in boxing? What's changed? Nothing's changed, has it? We've even had people ringing bell, haven't we, a minute early in title fights when somebody's in trouble. Are these people disciplined? Are they fuck? Nothing's happening and nothing ever will happen. While you've got the people at the top still there with their noses in the trough, am I right? Look, have you I noticed how it's all connected, Mark? Sky Telly, promoters, boxing board of control. You've seen it all this week. They've all come out and apologised and said, eh, it want a phone. Oh, you know, Terry O'Connor's a good guy. Robert Smith does a great job, they've all said, aren't they? But they weren't all saying that when the scorecards were read out, were they? Now they've all sat and thought about it and the big people behind the scenes have all fucking said, here, shut your mouths and don't say, oh, oh, we'll do this. Or they've all thought about themselves. I mean, look at Joe Gallagher. He can't get his tongue any further up Sky and Matchroom's assholes, can he? He's apologising again last night, two days on trot. Apologise. Every time I see Joe Gallagher, he's like that. Anyway, capping hand again. Please, Eddie, don't let me go because Frank Warren don't want to work with me. Eddie's only game in town for Joe Gallagher, isn't he? But Eddie knows that. That's why he's lowballing him. It's all in front of people's eyeballs, but they don't stew the game. They just come out and say, I pokey talking shit. Am I fuck talking shit? I get it right most times or thereabouts. It's in front of people's fucking eyeballs what's going on. It's a corrupt sport run by corrupt people or incompetent. The one or the other, so come out. Let Robert Smith have an interview with me. I've got some questions for him. Let Eddie Ayn have an interview with me. No, they're not going to fucking do that, are they? Why wouldn't they do that? Because I'd be on them, wouldn't I? I'd be prepared, wouldn't I? I'd be prepared. I'd be on them like a rash. I'd be on them like Donkey Kong, mate. Just Wait. one last thing, yeah, right? Just on that, on on uh, on Terry O'Connor, on oh, yeah, on, yeah, on, on just on that. Yeah, well, just just on that, yeah, right? It seems like I know you're watching, know. Terry. You're a shit house. You're incompetent or corrupt. You got a problem? Fucking come on, channel, and let's get at it. I've got some questions here for you. Go on, Matt, you're saying. Just one last thing on it. It is, 
it seems uh, it seems all convenient. They're all coming out defending in that. It seems like Sky match him the ball. Coogan as well. Coogan as well. It seems, well. It seems like it's one big family, yeah, right, which obviously these people, they you go to shows, you get to know people, you know what I mean? And they've known, they've got relationships for years, yeah, right. But listen, if it weren't a phone and it was a scorecard, okay, yeah. But why isn't he laser focused on that action, on the, that round? Listen, when you're a judge, yeah, you've got to be watching it like a whole three minutes of every round. Do you know what I mean? So you make sure you get them scores right. So why 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 isn't he being disciplined for not being focused on the fight? He's looking away. He's looking down. Why the fighters are fucking fighting in the ring? It doesn't right, matter about the scorecard or ele- electronic scorecard, mobile phone, iPad. I don't give a fuck if it's a fucking PC he's got in hand, his hand or a dildo. Point is, he's, his eyes are not on the match, are they? On the fight. No. But what does he have to do? Does, does, the, does, the, does the Sky cameras or someone film filming him have to, have to pick him up falling asleep for him to lose his job or get disciplined or... I don't know, but I'll tell or you. End up, or, the cameras will not be pointed on the judges this weekend, will they? Because they're all going to go one one five, one one three. Because now that they've let O'Connor off with this, it's worse for the sport because every judge now knows that they can give whatever cards the cards that they want, and that they're going to be protected by Robert Smith, aka the fucking cult leader. Am I right? Yeah. There's no there's no accountability now, and you know if we have another bad one like this. It's more families. Of, say, for instance, parents at home, they're going to go, you know, we're not watching this. Then the kids, the teenage kids, are not going to get to see it. Oh, Dad, are we getting it pay-per-view? No, we're not. And then a generation of fans get lost because of people like this that can't do their jobs correctly. For example, if you pull your car into a, a valet place and they valet it, and a lot of people, when they do valets, they just they don't take pride. They get them dusters and they go inside and they're pressing stuff and all sorts and they mess everything up, don't they? I've had people in cars I've had where, you know, the electronic seats and all that and they've messed up and they've knocked some underneath or a wire out. You know, we're just being heavy-handed. You won't go back there again, would you? If you had your house plastered and it were a fucking dripping all over and a mess, would you have them back? No. If you went into a cafe and had a, had a sausage sandwich and the sausage were cold in the middle or frozen, you ain't going back there, are you? So why do we have to put up with this again? Why can't there be some some transparency? Why? Why is a sport, man? Because it's not governed properly, is it? These people are supposed to be governing the sport like you, Cad. Supposed to be governing dope tests. They can't do the job right. Neither can these. It's right, isn't it? Wonder, wonder, we're wondering why everything stays secretive now and... Now, 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 now you see why. Robert Smith got his why. Senate foot, didn't he, when he came out and he went, who said that? Social media? I don't take notice of social media. It's not up to them. He was more or less saying, look, we're going to do what we want. And they always have and they always will. All the, They all do what they want because they're all getting paid. Nobody wants to rock the boat, do they? Terry called it perfectly the other night and he said, look, They've had their heads together and they said, look, let's not start screaming about this scorecard because when it works in favour for right people, everybody's happy. So, let, so let's leave it at that. But not much were made about the card for Crawler, was it, in his last fight. But that was just as bad, wasn't it? But Shocker, mate. Because, because this one's a bit different, I think there's been a lot of social media on it. But because it went... It, it's hard to explain, mate, but... It just fucking winds me up. It winds me up. It winds me up. It's another now in the coffin, mate. But of course it is, yeah. Of course it is, yeah. But when when is somebody going to come out and say, Do you know what? We're going to look into it, border control. They need looking at it, don't they, from somebody. I don't know who. But they, they need looking at it. Need, they need investigating. I'm calling for you lot at border control to be investigated. Yes, you, Robert Smith, Charlie Giles and all rest of yours. You all need looking at. You've you've been at it too long. You need to step aside and let new people come through. I mean, Charlie Giles and Robert Smith were there. I remember being there when I first started watching boxing. 
So th- th- they've had a they've had a good run, haven't they? O'Connor's been involved in over fifteen hundred shows worldwide. I mean, he- he's had a good do out of it, hasn't he? Oh, good do's out of it, Ross. He's a thousand pound every show. That's one point five million pound. That's not bad. That just for flying about all over the place doing something you love, is it? But he's had more than that. Do you know them Vegas ones get eight thousand dollars a weekend for one show? Eight grand. It's not bad. It's not bad, is it? Is is she related to Robert Bird, the referee? That's another. Yeah. So basically, they're on a million pound a year just from boxing, and they've got other. They've got the jobs as well, and they're both incompetent as well. That he he was incompetent when when Frotch were knocking Boote about. Do you know what I mean? Him, that Robert Mm. Robert Bird, he was useless then. But uh, anyway, moving on. I don't want to talk about that fucking shower of shit. They give me an ulcer. Uh, we spoke about Dave Allen walking around like Vincent Gigante, haven't we? Doing his retard act. Uh, video offering zone. We spoke about video offering people to come on. If anybody's got, you know, some big gojones and you want to come on Zoom and get your opinion out, you're welcome. It's no good sending comments. Even those of you who want to be trolls, come from behind your keyboard, because this is what you do. You do not house like this. That's your keyboard, and you're like that. And you're like, okay, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, come on here. Come from behind your keyboard, grow a pair, and let's, let's see you on Porky's Corner. But better still, let's see your face. Uh, so we've mentioned that. We've mentioned KSI Logan Paul. Dazone coming to UK, two quid a month. What do you think to that? Um, to be fair, they're only they're only showing boxing at the minute, aren't they? So they're not bringing much to the table. But what they will do is nick all the international content. So Sky won't get anything. Nah. With all the so with all these match from USA shows, they will go on the zone now. They won't they won't go on Sky no more unless they're the big 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 shows and and they're going to be pay per view. But over here, but <sighs> two quid a month that will go up depending on what they get, what, what other sports get because boxing ain't going to move the needle for them over here. And the, the numbers will see that, but that's why they're coming in at so at such a low price. So it, I, I'm not too sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing that more more broadcasters are coming over here, getting involved in the sport or not, because they got they get it, monopolies are not not always a good thing at all. But if they can if they can put on some good fights, then yeah, I'm all, I'm all for it. But I'm not. I'm not convinced at the minute. I'm not convinced that they're going to spend the money, and I think they're in trouble as well. Yeah, we, yeah, it's yeah. all like them. Look, they're all. It's all like launching, isn't it? Russ? It's all like launching over here, but and doing a global launch and putting out a press release. But two quid cheap, I'm Matt, isn't it? Two quid's nothing, Russ, is it? Do you know what I mean? Even seven, even a ten of a month's not much for Amazon and Netflix and that. But, you know, how many more of them are going to come out? And then before you know it, you've got to pay to such and such a month just to watch sports. Sky's enough as it is. Sky's enough. BT's enough. Just just, just paying the subscription alone. We're, we're not even... We've, we've gone... We've, 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 we've spoke about a pay-per-view already, but just talking about just normal, normal subscription of what you're getting served up. So, yeah. Uh, all right then. Uh, James Elder, has he come out with some comments? Somebody said I don't know what comments he's come out with, but somebody said he's come out and said something today. Has he? Uh, I don't know. I haven't got him on. Is it Twitter, round about the tenth year anniversary? Yeah, it is. Oh. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. What it'll it be is. Yeah, it I is. Yeah. Well, that Coogan has been ringing up asking if they'll do him a message and all that. It's his tenth year anniversary, but didn't Jake want James Elder the one that started it? And it were James Elder, mm-hmm. then Coogan, Jane, no. Jane Couch, and Rita won it. it. No, it was it was Coogan and James, and and, and I think he, they started after Jane Couch, didn't they? So, 
But it, Jay, sorry, it was Jane Couch who started it with that Rita then, were it? No, not IFL. They started before. I think they started beforehand. Because they, they started before. around in an awesome, didn't they? Rita, Jane, Coogan, and Elder flying around in that. I remember when they started, they were flying around in Rita's Mondeo. I remember that because I've seen him at a show, but uh, he's come a long way, hasn't he? Hey, listen, nobody can say Coogan's not an hard worker because to do that every single day, you've got to have a lot of patience and he's really good behind camera and but he's really poor in front, in front of it, isn't he? But you've got to have a lot of patience well, to do it. It's hard work, mate. It's traipsing up and down. I don't like travelling me. When I go down to London and come back, I'm always exhausted. I am, honestly. I couldn't do what they do. I couldn't go around and do it. I couldn't. I'd rather just be a critic from home or from my office. But he's done well. They've changed the game, and I think that's good. But I do feel a little bit sorry for James Elder. I do know half the story, but there's two sides to every story, so I'm not going to mention it. But I do feel sorry for him, and I think that he could have been treated a bit better. But I also remember when he threatened Dennis with legal action over something I'd said. On sorry, he threatened Baylorick TV, Ingram Jones. They threatened him we go to B B W M Baylorick TV October 2016. I did an interview and Eddie Earn told them they should deal with it. And I think I said in the interview that Coogan and James are like employees of Frank Warren and Eddie Earn. I think I think that's what pissed them off. And they threatened legal action to Baylorick TV, who rung Dennis, because it was Dennis that said, oh, you ought to go on there and do an interview and tell him what we're doing. So Dennis said, right. Fight, told, oh, Elder rung Dennis. He said, oh, what's Porky saying? Dennis says, here, yeah, don't you be ringing here because Eddie Earns had you ring me. Roll the fucking dice and we'll have lawyers on it. And they backed down him, Elder. Elder were threatening lawyers. He, he won't Coogan, it were Elder. And Dennis went, roll the dice, because he's got them on retainers, hasn't he? Dennis, he's not bothered, is he? Roll the dice, Dennis said. And they fucking shut up. They got back in touch with Bay Laurie. And I don't, f I think he might have cut some out of it, Ingram. I'm not sure. You'd have to ask Ingram, but Bay Laurie TV, October 16th. Get on there and watch that interview. I'm not sure if he cut anything out of it. And that was my first ever one that I did. And they all said, you're a natural, you. I said, why? I said, because you're fearless. And I said, oh, but that was the first ever one that I did. But they threatened legal action. But I've seen Elder since then. Me and Dennis gripped him in uh, in, in Cardiff at Langford Sheedy fight. And he come over and he were all, he were all right. The, the, and I've seen, I've seen Colgan a few times. I've seen him in Bulgaria. They're actually all right. They're hardworking kids. And I think it's a shame they've split up. I think it's a big shame. But it is a hard job that, you know, traipsing about with your camera up and down the country. Oh, you've just no life, you know that. No, it's no tough. It's, I'm, an home, it's I'm a home bird, me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do that. I'm a home bird. I mean, why do you need to traipse up and down now when we've got this Zoom? I mean, I love this Zoom, mate. I think it's brilliant. I don't want to go to office. I can't wait to get <laughs> home. I don't want to go to office, mate, honestly. But obviously, it's there for me, isn't it? So... I don't. I should have my billboard finished off this week in office because only half of it up. But I, I think this Zoom is brilliant for getting out there, Matt. Do you? I think it's good. Yeah. What's your bill? What's your bill? What's your billboard, Russ? What, what, what you got a special surprise for us fans? There, no, Russ? it's it's same. It's same one that's in office with sponsors on and that. But there's just the. It's a five section one. There's only three sections on it, isn't there? There's just going to okay. put part one and part five to it. No, it's just it's same one. But it, I just want it finishing. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, they're not getting paid. Yeah. A lot of money, them, you know. We all framework and that fortunes. A lot yeah, of money. It's not like, cheap, is it? I'm like gasping when like, invoice coming. I see a deal with that. But it, uh, I just want it finishing, and uh, I might feel like I want to go back up to the office. I'm up there in the morning for got a Mickey Theo interview tomorrow. He's my Friday man now. So, oh. yeah, he wants John Fury fight, doesn't he? Why not? See if it happens, boss. Unfinished business, isn't it? So no, made the best just... man win. What do you yeah, see? Let's see what we'll see what happens if they get on, mate. Well, if my, my all, all the all the all the all the YouTubers will be all over that. 
Yeah, they'll be hanging out at the back of them, won't they? What what upsets me is people are giving an opinion on it, saying John Fury will kill him, but I they don't know even know who Spooky Fury is. No, and nobody's ever seen John Fury fight either, so nobody knows, do they? No. You've got one guy that's training and he's in shape all year round, and the other one is a bit up and down, isn't he? So I don't know. We're, we're going to see, aren't we? Because they're going to have to fight. It, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we're, we're going to see, aren't we? Mm. I think it should happen and they should get a few quid out of it and give something to NHS and it'd be done so everybody can go watch. I think it'll happen when we can all go sit down and watch. I think that's when it's going to happen. I don't think it'll just happen as a tear up in the street. But it will happen. It's going to happen. I can guarantee you it will happen. Because they're both big personalities, aren't they? They've both got egos. Do you know what I mean? And John will never be able to put his head down on his pillar when he's older and know that he hadn't fought. He'd, he'd, he'd have to fight him and vice versa. They're going to have to get it out of the system. A bit like me and Steffi Bull, in it, really? Steffi? Yeah, but... See me. Me and Steffi will probably meet in jail, won't we, one day? I might end up in jail or something for drink driver or something stupid or something. You know, every now and then I do something a bit daft and he might be in there doing his big sentence for He's getting done for him. We'll get at it in showers. <laughs> <laughs> getting them showers, you boy. Having a wear of a bit of soap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, what down his fucking throat. Jesus. Uh, we'll see. And, and that's just how it is. Sometimes in life, you just, some people, you just know you're going to get at it with, there? and he's one I will get yeah. at it with. Probably when I see him. No we, love lost. We did, bump, we did sort of nearly bump into each other, you know. I were in a cafe in, uh, was it Wath? Having a cuppa and a bit of carrot cake with Mick Whale. And I was sat here and Mick was here. And Winder were back here and he goes, oh, Steffi's just pulled up. I went, well, he goes, what do you want to do? I says, we're getting right back here. You're here. It'll be fair, won't it? Because he's his mate as well, isn't he, Mick? And he says, all right, then I'll go outside. And he goes, oh, he's with his wife and kid. There's going to be no fighting. So I went, okay, which is fair enough, isn't it? That is fair enough, yeah. And uh, But Mick says, I'll go out and I'll have a word with him and he might, they might go back. And he, and I'll text Steffi home. But he didn't want to do that. So what's that tell you? You've got no bollocks, Steffi. You've got no bollocks. You should have sent your missus home when you're kid and got right at it with me and Mick had have took you on. You know what I mean? And I had my car, then I drove home, but... Um, that were a missed opportunity, wasn't it? And the other time, I went to that JA's at Denneby and they were doing a tyre. And I went into pay and he pulled in. And as, I've, as I'm paying, he, he, he were pulling out. I don't know what had gone on, whether it's in my car or what, I don't know. But anyway, it's all bollocks, isn't it? Fucking grown men, aren't we? But it's got to happen. Talking, ab- Go on. Talking about Doncaster fires, what's gone on? What's happened with the McDonald's? Where have they where have, where have they gone missing? I don't know. What's I going on with them? I know somebody who saw Gavin, or is it Jamie? They look alike, don't they? One of them's 14 stone, I don't know which. 14 stone. Oh wow. They're finished, aren't they now? And is is one of them getting divorced and he's up to eyes in it with lawyers and Jamie, yeah. Other ones, other ones not. Not uh, Caldwell's got rid of him, hasn't he? Caldwell got rid of him, and then obviously he's been telling tales to Eddie Earn, hasn't he? He's had his, he's had his man, isn't he? He'll, if they've been going uh, out uh, and not living the life, Caldwell will be first to know because it's trainer. So you kind of like you can see where he's coming from, can't you? If they're not living the life and they're acting like clowns, because Jamie's a bit mad, he's not all there, is he? But uh, <laughs> he, he ain't all there, honestly. And he used to speak to Dennis like shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, he used to answer back to Dennis. He was the only boxer that ever would. I used to answer back to Dennis as well. I think Dennis probably needs that in his life, doesn't he? <laughs> well, he's a bit bonkers, isn't he, McDonald? Uh, Jamie. And I think it's a shame, isn't it, because he's earned big money, hasn't he? But a few months ago, we were flying around in a Porsche, but I don't know. Look, I'd like to see him go back to Dennis and apologise and then start again and be brought back, but it'd be, it'd be damaged good, happen. wouldn't it? Be damaged goods, wasn't it? Well, Eddie's Eddie's got got his worth, aren't he, man? He got him to Japan, got him that big payday, got his cut, and he's cut him loose, hasn't he? 
And he thought Eddie were his best mate, didn't he? That might be why he might fucking be going crackers. I don't know. Boxing's a funny sport, isn't it? They're not all like Clinton and Froch, careful with the money. Do you know what I mean? And no. done well for themselves. The young lads that are they're egged on by, they've got hangers on and they wanna they want nice things and they don't they're not they're from a different era to us, aren't they? I, I'm 50 year old. Do you know what I mean? They're from a different era. I've done all that years ago, but when you get to my age, McDonald's 30 odd, isn't he? He should be a bit more careful with his money. He's earned loads more than Josh Whale. Loads more. But Josh will be the one that'll do well at boxing. And, you know, he don't drink, don't smoke, don't party. Careful. He's genuine, big-hearted, good in community. He's the role model, isn't he? But he is what it is, isn't it? I, I don't, do I feel old for McDonald's? Do I fuck? As far as I'm concerned, fuck them. They're both disloyal pair of fucking whatevers, aren't they? So it's karma, isn't it? If they're on skid row, fuck them. It's as simple as that. They're not... They don't pay my bills, but I think it's a shame what's happened to Jamie. I think it's a shame, a crying shame what's happened to him. But what can you yeah, do? Yeah, sounds, sounds like it, doesn't it? Of course it is. Sounds like You're it. You're talking about a kid here that's, what's he beat? Five world champions, more than Bellew, more than Clinton Woods, more than Robin Reed. Is it five or six? Might even be six, I don't know. Yeah, he's a legit world class fighter. Could, well, he was, 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 was a legit world class fighter. Been in with all of them. Went over to fight twice, whether it in Texas or Mexico or whatever, and beat that good kid yeah. didn't he twice. I forgot. Two good he, wins. Two good wins on trot there. Uh, he bashed Stewie all up. So I, I will buzz him when he did that because I don't like him. Uh, I just, I just tell it straight on. I don't fucking like Stewie all. I'm glad McDonald smashed him up. Uh, I just tell it straight, and I think it's a sad story. But like I said, he's not putting no petrol in my cars or paying my bills, is he? Not paying any, doesn't run out for me, so he's not been on my channel. So fuck them, move on. You got to get rid of shit. It leaves stains, and Eddie's got rid of money. Cold War got rid of him. Skid Row for them. They'll have to go get jobs as plasterers. That's what they are. Isn't it plasterers or something. Go plaster. Yeah. Get plastering. Go back to that. And because when you're riding high, you're horrible to people on your way up. Well, you see them fucking people on way down, don't you? Mm. Remember that. Absolutely, mate. Remember that one. But it is what, what it is. Isn't it? What what else you got for us, Russ? What like? Oh, uh, do you think Savannah Marshall wins the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, com comfortably. Comfortably. Do you feel that pay-per-view is going to be with us for a long time now? And do you feel that it's been rinsed that much, but it, that it's become the norm? I think it will always be there for the big, big fights. I think these mediocre pay-per-view shows, not so much focusing on the main event, just all these shows, I think they will die. I, I, I'm hoping that football gets scrapped and I think it will get scrapped but I think it'll always be there for the, the, the I think it'll always be there for the big 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 fights yeah so um, I think that's the um, the Americans that's the way they do it I think that and I think I think that will stay yeah but it all depends on these if these subscri subscription channels, the likes of the zone can come over here. If they can get some decent sports, then um then maybe they can put on some good fights and give some good value fights for just normal normal subscription. But it's good. it they need if it starts moving the needle, then more and more broadcasters will put money behind the sport, but people just don't want to seem to put the money into the sport, especially with, and, and then when you get these crap shows that do crap numbers, it just tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? So, pay-per-view will always be there for the big fights, though. You know, pay-per-view... That answers your question. You know what Dennis told me when I first started him about pay-per-view? He says he remembers sitting in HBO offices in New York. And he was sat there with these... Boxing people, I don't, I don't, I don't know. He didn't mention anything. I think Lou Bella might have been something to do with it. I'm not sure. 
it was sat there with these people and one of them it might have been Art, Art Palulu or something. I forget now. Might have been him. A lot of boxing people might know him. I might have mentioned his rock, a matchmaker or something. One, this guy said to Dennis, you know what pay-per-view is supposed to be, Dennis? Dennis said, what? And he said, it's supposed to be, and I've said this before on the channel, where there's a pay-per-view on and you're talking with your mates and you said, you know what? It's pay-per-view this. We can't miss this fight. You know, like Mike Tyson, Holyfield. We all remember that, don't we? Mm. I'm listening to it in jail on the radio at early hours. They all say, it's pay-per-view. We can't miss this fight. We can't miss it. It was something different. It was like, wow, Frank Bruno against Oliver McCall. Pay-per-view, we can't miss it. Because it was Big Frank and he was popular. But what's happened? What's happened? Uh since greed's took over because greed reaches inside you, reaches really inside you. Greed's took over, and now the the product's watered down. When it becomes watered down, when they do sort of put something decent on, we go, that's a great fight, that. But we forget about the ones that we've had that have been watered down, don't we? For example, this weekend. Usek and Chisora, they're both not British, they both weren't born here, and there's no world title online. Usek's in, you know, in only his second heavyweight fight, like I said, there's no belt online, and Chisora's going to get his 10th loss. But that's an headline act. Back up eight year, you've got Froch Boote on non-pay-per-view. Free. Boote, 30 and 0, 20. Uh, tw 24 uh, KOs 30 and 0, 24 KOs top 10 pound for pound right and you've got Froch there where 28 and 2 or something had been beat by Kessler and he'd been beat by Ward but it were, but it were in Nottingham that were free Saturday night forward 8 and a half year you've got Eggington and Cheeseman on non-pay-per-view you see where I'm coming from that's a watered down product. Do you remember when they told Eddie Hearn, now there's no more pay per view after Audley Harrison David Day? You've overkilled it, right? That were garbage. They reined it in, didn't they? Since then, he got his claws back in, didn't he, with Frotch Kessler, then Frotch Groves, then Frotch Groves to at Wembley, then they've seen what the money is coming in, and then they just give him carte blanche, aren't they, with pay per view? Yes, Eddie, yes, Eddie, yes, Eddie. And he's took all them yeses. And he's been doing what he wants now. And he's like a kid in the sweet shop, isn't he? Because he's never been told the word in his life, has he? No. Dad, can I have that? Yeah, of course you can. He's never been told no, has he? Never. Once you start telling him... When... Kel Brook told him no, didn't he? We're going to see Bob Allen when Eddie's not involved. He didn't like that, did he? He saw him... Kel! <laughs> well, like that, wasn't he? But everything he said from what we've heard, it were all lies, wasn't it? Because... Kel Brook's not done anything wrong. Eddie's not going out to bat for him. They've been out and got their own fight. So, and they're saying Eddie knew about it. So, whether he did or didn't, they've not broke any rules, have they? Because they didn't have a deal with him and he wasn't delivering. Am I right? He, he hasn't delivered for a while for him. You know I'm right. So, Kel Brook, I'll take my hat off to you and your stepdad. But this is how I look at it. Sky or a shower of shit bags for what they've done to Kelbrook because they've ruined the kid there that could have been... He's going to go down as a world champion, isn't he? But he could have been one of them. He got into the top £10 pound for pound ring magazine, didn't he, at number 10? But he could have kicked on from that, couldn't he? He could have really, really been a dominant welterweight. You know, like Costa Zoo, he could have had a really long... Obviously, he was light welterweight, wasn't he? But he could have had a run like Costa Zoo, couldn't he? You know, a, re a dominated, like a Carl Zaggy type. You know, if he'd have wanted to. Well, so we only have to look at Sean Porter and look at the career he's had since he's actually lost to Kel Brook. Been a world champion, have had significant fights. He's fought yeah. Furman, Garcia, Spence. Look, he's fought all of them. All look of at them. the career he's had. All of them, mate. All of them. All of them. Look at the sport. Look at what Spence is doing now. Look at the career he's had. Career he's having. He's, he's going in with Garcia next month. He's been in with Paul. He's been in with Porter. He's been in with Mikey Garcia. That was a bit of a gimme, but you, you, you know what I mean, didn't you? 
Yeah, of course. You know what I mean. Yeah. And, it, it, but, and then to answer your question, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, with regarding the pay-per-view, yeah, when was the last time you had that you had that you had that feeling when the you couldn't miss the excitement? Yeah, the excitement. Rose too. Vladimir, maybe Joshua. I think I were excited. Maybe yeah, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. yeah I agree. Like maybe that. I was I was I did I did look forward to that. I look forward to that. To be fair, I thought. I don't know what's Tessa gonna happen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been excited uh, and, and you know, just to touch on your point about that Frotch Buta, I don't think you can compare that to a normal Saturday night fight night, Russ. The oh, Frotch Buta, no. you know what I mean? Because that was at 12 o'clock at night. He didn't make his wing walk till then. And that was accommodated for Canadian TV. So that yeah, fight wouldn't have ever happened. But, hmm? yeah, but it still weren't pay-per-view. They have pay-per-views at four in the morning on Sky. If that were 12 o'clock, the show didn't start at 12 o'clock, mate. The show didn't start at 12 o'clock, but that fight was all about the main event because it was Frampton on the undercard. So I'm not too sure if I spoke to you about this before, but Canadian TV bankrolled that really that show, do you know what I mean? And they probably yeah, paid the majority of Bill Kay's purse. Should have been pay-per-view. That fight should have been paid. Well, at the time, Fox, Cole Fox was just coming off the loss versus Wald, mate. Do you know what I mean? And pay-per-view weren't really about then. So it was it was different times. So I do think it's a bit unfair. You can listen, we all got our opinions, do you know what I mean? I just don't think all right, then we'll back up all right, then back up a few months before Frotch Ward Super Six final. That were on Sky, that weren't uh pay-per-view either. Frotch Ward. In the final of the Super Six, that went May, well. Maybe looking back, that should have been pay per view. There you go. So, I mean, you look at some of Carl's fights now, they'd be pay per view every time now, wouldn't they? He had three pay per views, Bellew's had more than him. How messed, yeah. up, is that? How messed up is that? It'd, it'd be fought if he was around now, he'd be fighting twice a year and be and, and have them slots, wouldn't he? Just have them. Slots of when he wanted to fight. Yeah, yeah, of course he would. He put Eddie Earn into a great position, Carl Froch. So did Kel Brook. Kel Brook and Carl Froch got Eddie Earn pay per view fights. They got him six pay per view fights. Kel Brook and Carl Froch. Darren Barkley I never Eddie... got him a pay per. Audley got him one. That's seven. Audley Brook Froch seven. Bellew four. There's eleven pay per views there, and. You you look at all all them, even even uh, Luke Campbell and Crawler had a pay per view, didn't they each? Look look at all them. Luke Luke, Luke Campbell did. I don't think Crawler had a pay per view. Crawler have a pay per view against no Shenko, no. No no, that no, was a normal squad TV. Luke Campbell did that. Well, look at all them pay per views there. Frotcher's records better than all them, all of them. Yeah. All of them. He's had three pay per views. Tony Bellews with WWE, won it with David A. And Usek with him with his pension fight. I mean, are we, are, is Derek Chisora going to get a pension fight if he loses a few more? Yeah, he'd get a pension fight and a farewell fight. These pension fights, I have a problem with them, me, you know. I have a problem with them. I have a big problem with them because there's too many of them being handed out. But it's jobs for boys, isn't it? It is what it is, isn't it? Nobody's mentioning Callum Smith, are they? Josh Warrington. John Ryder. What's happening with these kids? No. Martin Ward. What's, what's Warrington, happening? Needs, Warrington, Warrington needs to fight, mate. He's got momentum as well, and he's a very good fighter. Warrington's beat everybody he's fought. 30 and oh, he's only 29 uh -huh. years old. He's won everything, yeah. gone through all levels. Isn't... You've got to tip your heart to Josh Warrington and his team. There's... Big shout out to his team. Nick Manners. There's no debate about there's no debate about his career, is there, Russ? He's beaten everyone. Made the Galahad Galahad fight was close, but listen. Fuck, you know, you who did it, you win in that? Oh, I thought it could have been either way, mate, to be honest with you. Fucking stunk arena out, Galahad, mate. I know, mate. I know he did stink the arena out, mate, but stinking the arena out and actually winning the fight is two totally different things, mate. And I thought we could have nicked it. But I had to do an all-night 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, stink the place out more than him. He, I've never seen you a know when he's booed so much. I was hearing say when Daryl fought Carl Froch, stunk the arena out, mate. The booze were unbelievable. Stunk yeah, well, out, mate. I mean, referee took a point off him in end, and it probably cost him that. Yeah, it cost him. Yeah, split decision, on it? But it stunk the arena out. It was awful, holding and running, and jeez, they were like lightning. <laughs> we like yeah. lightning, but all right then, mate. Well, listen, we've had a good chat, haven't we? We've uh, we've we've, we've, uh, we've tried we've, to we've, save boxing. Not that it needs. Well, to. yeah. And we we'll uh, see. We move on, don't we, to Saturday? Usyk Chisora. Hey, on pay per view, twenty quid. Go on, Eddie. Listen, t- t- pass your seatbelts in, mate, and get ready for a cl- good night of boxing. Seven There's hours. A stacked undercard as well, mate. That card. That card. <laughs> that card. Thank yeah, you, Eddie. Mate. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you very much for the stacked card. How could we ever repay you? The question is: Is Eddie Earn going to wear a tuxedo to steal the night? Well, we're going to see, aren't oh. we? Is Dave Allen going to walk to the ring in a dressing gown? Doing his Vincent Gigante retard crazy man look. All will be revealed. All will be revealed, mate. Look forward to it. All right, then, mate. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. I'll let you get off to work now, then, mate. Appreciate you, Russ, mate. All no the best. Problem. You take care of yourself, mate. And, Cheers, look, and uh, be good, mate. Take care. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Well, that was uh, Matt Skelton from Essex. Uh, he's a cabbie, Matt. Nice guy. Not Matt Skelton from Bedford, the heavyweight boxer. Matt Skelton from uh, Essex. So, Essex boys. So, he's going to be one of Ern's neighbours soon. Like I said, go throw an egg at his window. Oh, or we could also also post. We, I could get him to post them a, a, a porky uh, leaflet saying, "Don't forget to subscribe. Keep on trucking." <laughs> oh well, right. I'm going. So, how long have you had there? You've had an hour and a half there, nearly. You've done well. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys. All right. All right. And South Yorkshire packaging. Don't have nightmares, Steve Wellens. <laughs>